welcome to your market brief for the week of January 6th from the NASDAQ market site. I'm Caroline Woods. Let's start with the latest on last week's U.S. airstrike that killed Iran's top general. Tensions remain high after President Trump's threat to bomb Iranian cultural sites, as well as Iraq voting to have the U.S. foreign troops exit the country. For perspective on how this conflict could potentially impact markets around the world, we're joined by J.J. Kinahan, Chief Market Strategist with TD Ameritrade. J.J., thanks so much for being here. Thank really you for appreciate having me, it. So we've seen a pretty dramatic escalation in tensions between the U.S. and Iran and Iraq. Have these heightened geopolitical tensions changed your outlook at this point for 2020? Uh, no, it hasn't. Now, that, that being said, can it? Of course. But if you look at the market's reaction overall, we did have a bit of a sell-off, but I don't think it's been a panic by any stretch of the imagination. You haven't seen people running for bonds, so to speak. Uh, VIX has still stayed fairly muted considering what's going on. The one area I thought that was interesting that went up pretty uh, pretty much was gold. Gold, I believe, is at a seven-year high as of this morning. And so with that, we'll keep our eyes on that. But often the first two weeks, a lot of saber rattling. I think you have to sort of keep your cool a little bit see what happens and then go with your thesis from there if it's going to change so in your mind what is the flight to safety during this uncertainty or do you just stay stay as uh, is? What, what, I, what i would look at is i'm not going to change my investments overall quite yet want to see what's what's going to happen because i think one of the mistakes people make is sometimes they run right to defense stocks yes they, they had a little bit of a pop may have a little bit more of a pop but if things settle down they're the first ones that are probably going to come back down so i think you're better off being an observer for a little bit and seeing what the implications are of what happened over the past weekend. So as futures continue to fall, crude oil continues to spike. What's your take on the path well, for crude oil? How much could this impact? Obviously, we're not as reliant on it here in the U.S., but can the global economy that's seen a slowdown really handle higher oil prices? Uh, a couple of things. You know, you, the futures <laughs> fell, but let's face it, as you and I speak this morning before the opening, S&P futures are still only down 13 points. And overall, that's not a big move. And, you know, so, so again, I, I want to keep that in perspective. As far as crude oil, yes, I mean, crude oil went over 60 before this happened. You know, uh, I, I think that crude oil has some room to run to 70. If it got over 70, I think it becomes an inflationary concern overall. But a, as you look at some of the industries, et cetera, I think most industries can handle it in this 60 range. It was stuck between 50 and 60 for so long. We'll see if this uh, situation does stabilize a little bit. I think the actual test will be can it continue to hold 60 going forward. There's been so much pressure on it over the last few years. Uh, so to me it's probably the most interesting thing to watch during this little time of crisis. So you don't seem overly concerned at this point but so you know it's not impacting your outlook but what is your outlook for 2020? Well, Where I, are we going from here? Well I think first of all you know if you look at PE ratios the first thing people will say well they're awfully high so we know that the E has to catch the P. The earnings have to get a little bit more giddy up if you will. Um, my overall outlook is if we have a down move it's probably going to happen in the first four to six months of the year because I'm usually a believer that as you get to election you tend to be a little bit more muted in your uh, overall moves. The daily moves may continue to be back and forth quite a bit, but overall you, you tend to not go anywhere. Uh, with that said, I think that if we can get some earnings growth, we continue on this great employment machine that we have going. You know, you, you talked about uh, employment this morning, that we can see up to 8% uh, growth this year. Now, that's really uh, reliant on the fact that earnings can go, that this situation doesn't escalate, that the tariffs go as we know they are planned right now. You know, on the first week of the year, it's really tough to say. Here's exactly what Especially I think is exactly have changed right. so much just from between two days. Exactly what I think is going to happen, and I think it's a little bit dangerous to do. But given what we know now, and we also know that there's going to be a lot of change with elections, and you have know, elections, impeachment, some ter you know, some situations in the Middle East, and still the tariff situation isn't signed, supposed to be signed next week. So there are a lot of of wild cards so I have to go on what we know right now about those situations. From those headwinds would you say that or just concerns would you say that earnings growth is the key to Absolutely. the rally continuing? This? Earnings drive markets and I think sometimes people forget that. No, well in 2019 day, it didn't necessarily. It, it, it didn't I, I kind of disagree a little bit in that they're also we're also forward looking on stocks so what stocks were telling us in 2019 is that we expect earnings to continue to, well the growth wasn't great, but to grow. So long term earnings drive markets. Now, there can be individual news that does drive the markets for a temporary amount of time. But overall, long term is the folks who are, are watching your show today. 
are looking at what should I be investing in? What are the companies you think that are going to have good earnings over time? Because, you know, that's where you want to be. All right. So if earnings drive markets, the consumer really drives the economy. Uh, in terms of the jobs report coming out on Friday, what can we expect? To, uh, and how, I guess, important, how vital is an upbeat number to keep those recession fears on the back burner? Well, I think even, you know, uh, I, I don't like to get too caught up on one particular number. One particular number does not make a trend. The trend has still been pretty amazing. It, we, we do have the 167,000 expected. Uh, I do think we can meet it and maybe beat it a little bit just because of temporary hiring, whatever. Uh, what I'm more interested in is uh, what are going to be the revisions over the last couple of months where we had a little bit better than expected earnings, and where are the jobs being created? I, that's always the number one thing I like to look at. Are we seeing jobs being created in restaurants? restaurants and uh, hotels, not a bad place, but those tend not to be longer term careers for many people. What you want to see is manufacturing, construction, we continue to see business to business services and healthcare. When you see those are careers, people are getting insurance benefits, etc. So if you see restaurants and hotels combined with those, that's awesome. But if it's your leader, that gives me always a little bit of concern going forward. All right, we have to leave it there. JJ Kinahan, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate thanks for having me, Caroline. For more on the crisis in Iran, I spoke with Jeremy Siegel, Wharton School finance professor and senior advisor to Wisdom Tree. He offered his take on America's ability to address oil production issues in the Middle East. Watch this. One thing I think we all should realize is that we are much less impacted by oil shocks than we were years ago. Um, mainly because of our tremendous increase of our own production that basically makes the United States self-sufficient in oil. So the oil impact is much, much less, unless there's certain you know, major escalation bombing of uh, Iran's oil facilities, because uh, even though we're embargoed from buying oil from Iran, uh, Iran does supply China and other countries. If, Somehow we uh, crippled their ability to produce two, three million barrels a day. Um, now Saudi could come to the rescue and increase their production to offset it. That would have certainly higher uh, impact. Uh, my my feeling is is that uh, a significant impact is a is a very low probability event. Uh, you know via via the oil market because of our own dramatic increase in production and because I would expect that uh, Saudi would help us in, in terms of, of pumping any oil that might be reduced from uh, Iran. So based on that, I would assume that you would say that Friday's downturn could be possibly just a blip on your radar. You've been bullish for quite a long time. Uh, what's going to drive this market higher? Well, I think this market is, quote, fully valued, but uh, and, and, and not undervalued, but I don't think it's, it's overvalued. Uh, I, I think it really fairly reflects earnings. Um, I think that the market is certainly not, in my opinion, going to do as well as it did in 2019. I, I'm looking for a 0 to 10 percent increase in prices uh, this year. I, actually, one of the dangers is that people could be throwing risk to the wind and this, this thing could be a runaway. Uh, we sometimes call that a melt up uh, and, and produces prices too high. And then if there's a shock, you come down to earth and, and that could you know, impact uh, uh, sentiment. At this point, I don't think it's, it's there at all near that danger zone. Uh, but clearly, we all know that markets can move because of sentiment away from fundamentals. I think they reflect fundamentals and good fundamentals today, but you know, we'll have to see how, uh, how prices develop throughout the year. That was Jeremy Siegel, author and Wharton professor of finance. For the rest of my interview, we'll be tweeting out fresh clips all week with his thoughts on the Fed, the trade war, and plenty more. Now, turning to the week ahead, as noted, Wall Street is eagerly anticipating December's jobs report. Consensus estimates are for gains of 167,000 non-farm payrolls and for unemployment to remain steady at 3.5%. The annual technology trade show CES begins in Las Vegas on Tuesday and runs through Friday. Market Watch and Barron's will have on-the-ground coverage throughout. 
On the earnings front, Constellation Brands will report on Wednesday. While many know the company for alcohol production, analysts will be closely listening for guidance on its cannabis-related investments. Additionally, we'll hear from Walgreens Boots Alliance, the worst performer in the Dow in 2019, losing 14 percent. Wall Street will be waiting to see if a turnaround is in store for the healthcare giant. Finally, the results of last week's poll are in. We asked how many trades do you make within your portfolio each month. Nearly 60 percent of you answered saying you make no more than one trade a month. That concludes today's market brief. We want to hear from you, though. Comment below and tell us about your first trade of 2020. What areas of the market are you bullish on following the most recent geopolitical developments? I'm Caroline Woods. Thanks so much for watching.